Consider the enormous challenges sea creatures face in migrating onto land, even if they somehow find a way to breathe air. Biologist Bill Shear is obsessed with figuring out how they did it. Combining a knowledge of modern arthropods and the ancient Earth, Shear tries to identify the tools needed to make the transition to land. But how did they initially survive that perilous step from the sheltering ocean to the treacherous conditions of land? Shear suspects they discovered a special bridge between land and sea, one that still exists. The historic bridge permitting the conquest of land may have been nothing more elegant than simple algae. Long a food source and home for aquatic dwellers, these mats grew along shorelines and above the water's edge on land. Perhaps they served like base camps, providing food and habitat to launch the invaders into the terrestrial world. Under those mats, conditions were tempered, and that gave them the time they needed to develop the new adaptations that would take them fully onto the land. Much of this chapter of the invasion story was completely unknown until recently, when a surprising piece of evidence came along that changed everything. A secret was uncovered in the fossil remains of early plants, which were spreading onto the continents. Within the plants, researchers found what they thought could be the microscopic remains of ancient arthropods. At first, their discoveries were dismissed. But with these new clues, an expert in arthropod anatomy like Bill Shear would be able to rewrite major chapters in the Book of Life. To get to this evidence, Shear would have to extract microfossils from solid rock. He used hydrofluoric acid to dissolve away the rock and leave behind only the organic fragments it contained, the remains of plants and animals. His discovery would forever change our view of the arthropod colonization of early Earth. When I came in the next day and washed and filtered the sample and found animal remains in it, it was wonderful. I can remember seeing some of the, the really striking fossils for the first time. You just get a feeling of excitement that's probably very similar to scoring the big touchdown <laughs> at homecoming, in the homecoming game. Uh, you just feel on top of the world, and it makes it worth all of the tedious searching and work that leads up to that. Shear now had the remains of the little invaders, but they were only fossil fragments. In order to see an entire animal, he would have to reconstruct them piece by piece. It was like assembling the pieces of a jigsaw puzzle without benefit of the picture on the box. One of the first creatures unveiled, an early ground-living spider. One success led to others. Gradually, Shear identified an array of early land colonists. His work with the microfossils confirmed what was long suspected. Many different kinds of arthropods were invading the land at the same time. In Shear's mind's eye, the world of 380 million years ago was beginning to come into focus. 
The world of the Devonian was probably different from our world in many, many aspects. The year was shorter and the days were not 24 hour days. You'd have a different atmospheric composition. The plant life would look quite different, strikingly different. Just a few species of plants growing very densely, and these plants would look quite primitive. The ancient plants may have looked different, but like their modern equivalents, they created microclimates that rendered the terrestrial world more hospitable. Imagining life without arthropods is almost an impossible task because they are so intimately involved in virtually every aspect of life on Earth. Arthropods are found in every habitat. There are arthropods that are adapted to live in hot springs near boiling. They're found on the tops of the highest mountains. They're found at the bottom of the deepest trenches in the sea. This is truly an arthropod planet. <laughs>